Welcome to Just Break Up, the podcast about love, heartbreak, and all the relationship advice you don't want to hear. My name is Sierra DeMolder. And I'm Sam Blackwell. And today we're going to answer a letter from somebody who's wondering how to share that she doesn't want to have children. But before we begin, we just want to give you our Surgeon General's warning, which is that Sierra and I are not licensed mental health practitioners. That's right. We are not professionals. We are not trained in any of this. So please take our advice as you see fit as a supplement, you know, to your other stuff. Uh, (laughs) We're only here to (laughs) offer our humble musings to hopefully shed some understanding and maybe some laughs about the incredibly rewarding but mostly confusing experience that is love. Before we dive into today's letter, I just want to remind y'all that this is going to be the last episode of 2023 we're going to take mm. next week off because of the holidays um you know we put out three plus episodes a week for the last i don't know well the last year but definitely for the last five years we've been putting out weekly content so we like to give ourselves a break uh during the holidays however we will be posting one special um patreon episode on our primary feed so if you're desperate for on un- you know on uh, professional advice <laughs> or to hear our voices, we're going to be putting out an episode on Wednesday. That's just like a, a sampling of what you can get on our Patreon. Anywho, let's dive into today's letter. It's from privately child free. Whose pronouns are she, her, who's writing to us from cold AF New York state. Dear Sierra, Sam and Spencer. I am a 26-year-old woman, she, her, in a relationship with a 26-year-old man, he, him. Let's call him Cooper. Cooper and I were good friends for many years before we started dating in 2020, and he is my good, true love. We are equals in partnership, and he has been so supportive and unwavering during my mental health journey the past year. We want to get married someday. My only hang-up is on the topic of children. I am child-free by choice, and I brought it up with Cooper a few months into our relationship to make sure it wasn't going to be a deal-breaker. His opinion back then and still now has been take it or leave it. He's okay with the future without kids. I still get worried sometimes that he'll change his mind someday, but that's out of my control. And I keep hearing your voices in my head saying, I have to trust what he's telling me. After a long road to acceptance, I am confident that the child-free lifestyle is right for me. Although I still do carry some insecurities and honestly still think about it every day. Online child-free communities have helped. I'm open about it with my immediate family, and they are largely accepting of it, even though they don't totally agree or understand it. My main concern is my partner's family, also very tight-knit. I'm the oldest cousin in my family, so no one in my generation has started having kids yet. On the other hand, Cooper is the youngest cousin in his family, and all four of his older cousins are now moms and are loving every minute of it. Important side note, his family is very matriarchal. His mom has two sisters who have mostly daughters. If we get married, I'll be the first woman to marry into the family for three generations. I am worried about how his family's view of me will change when they find out I don't want children. They have such strong family values, and one of Cooper's cousins just became a mom via surrogate after struggling with infertility for many years. I feel like it would be a totally different story if I was unable to have children, and although I feel that I can't have children due to other physical and mental health reasons, saying I can't have children doesn't feel right because that statement is associated with the many people that struggle with actual infertility. I have thought about how I could possibly go about telling his family when the time comes. We are not engaged yet, but I would definitely want people to know before we get married so expectations are set. Most of Cooper's extended family is progressive and open to different lifestyles, so I think after any initial shock, most of them would be accepting. My main concern is Cooper's parents. Cooper's mom, she, her, is the only one of her sisters who does not have any grandchildren. And though her great nibblings are treated like grandchildren by everyone in that generation, I know she wants grandchildren of her own. Cooper has an older brother, he, him, but he's not in a relationship currently, and I'm not sure whether or not he wants kids either, so I can't necessarily count on any shielding from him. Cooper's mom especially has made comments in different settings. For example, on Mother's Day a few years ago, she said she loves being a mom and, quote, God willing, I'll get to experience it too. At Mother's Day this year, Cooper's brother said something about how great... um, 
a mom she is, I agree. And she half jokingly made a comment about if I'm so great of a mom, maybe grandchildren are in order too. I'm paraphrasing. I had no idea what to say and just kind of looked at Cooper while Cooper's dad, he him said, oh, stop in a joking way. But most recently, she made a photo album of a trip they all took to Europe and made a comment about us showing them to your children and grandchildren. All this to say, having children seems to be something Cooper's parents absolutely expect and hope for. I guess my question is, how do I broach the subject with Cooper's parents when the time comes, which could be soon? I have thoughts about having a serious sit down conversation with them out of respect. And so they would have a chance to process and ask questions. But at the same time, I don't want to make it a huge deal because it shouldn't be a big deal. I have so many reasons for not wanting to have children and am willing to share those reasons with Cooper's parents and try to frame it in a positive light, such as it takes a village and we want to be the village for the rest of the family. My other concern is that Cooper's parents will know this decision was my decision and could blame me even if Cooper and I approach the conversation as our decision. As hard as I try, I think it's painfully obvious how terrible I am with kids, whereas Cooper is a great uncle to his cousins. I don't want to ruin any of the good relationships I have with his family. I don't want to give anyone the wrong idea that I'm judging their decision to have kids. For better or for worse, news in this family travels fast. So once we tell Cooper's parents, we probably won't have much control over the story from there. Do you have any advice for how to approach this conversation in a way that emphasizes how deeply I have thought about this decision, how much I realize it affects the future of their family, reinforces the fact that we can't make this decision, reinforces the fact that we can make this decision for our own lives and doesn't add to the stigma around choosing a child free life. Thanks so much. Privately child free. All right, Child Free, uh, thank you for writing to us and asking us this question. You know, I think it is, um, you know, I think it's really hard to make some of these decisions about how we want to approach our relationships and our families, especially when we're kind of coming up against a lot of unwritten or unagreed to rules about what relationships should look like and what people should want, right? Especially thinking about, you know, people who have uteruses and the expectations that like, of course they should want to have babies, right? Like that's what they're put on this green earth to do. So why would you not want to do that? Right. Um, and also just thinking about, right. Like the idea of nuclear family, the idea of sort of like passing on stuff from generation to generation is really, um, something that a lot of people hold really dear, uh, which is great, but also expect that same value of other people. So uh, what I really appreciate about your letter is that it feels like you're kind of like coming out to your future family as somebody who is bucking some of these like prescribed ways of being, some of these assumptions that people are making. And that process is really hard, right? Because it can be hard to think about how we might disappoint people. It can be hard to have a conversation that might be uncomfortable with folks that we don't know super well. Uh, it can be really hard to to think like, what are they going to think about me? How are they going to think about me? What's going to happen to our relationship? Uh, so I just want to send you all sorts of love and empathy in this. Um, it's hard to be the person that that sort of bucks the trend or that challenges people's sort of preconceived notion of how the world should work. Um, and, and you are doing that. Uh, even by making this choice for yourself, even by living with this certainty, uh, even if you haven't shared it with other people, just you making this decision and you thinking about the fact that being a parent isn't a necessity for everyone uh, is bucking the trend. So um, I want to just congratulate you on making this decision for yourself. I think everyone should be able to decide and also recognize that this is kind of a sticky situation for you with your with your future in-laws. So Sierra and I are going to get into some advice, some musings in just a second, but first we're going to take a quick break. All right, my darling, welcome back and thank you for trusting us with this letter and for listening. Um, yeah, I just want to affirm you as uh, Sam did that this, that we... Tr two strangers on the internet trust 
all of the thought and labor and care and nuance that you've applied to making this decision. And we trust you that this is the right and natural decision for you. I think that that is a word that I want to use really specifically because um, sort of the indoctrination that we receive about femininity and, and womanhood and maternity, you know, is that it's really natural and that women have a, a natural maternal instinct. And I just want to push back that peck back on that and say, you know, it's just as natural to not want kids. <laughs> it's just as natural <laughs> to be like, you know, to, I feel like, yes, we are going, you are going against the grain of society and of, um, gender stereotypes and, and whatnot. Um, but I just want to affirm that it, that you're not alone in this. Like you have definitely, you found those online child free communities. And um, I think that they're even bigger than, than what you have touched. Um, this is a natural and important and valid decision. And we know that you have come to it for, for all the right reasons. Um, I think it's tricky here because you're not just pushing against the grain of what, you know, society tells us we're supposed to do as as women and as, you know, coupled hetero people and all of that, um, you're, you're pushing, you might be disappointing an elder, uh, a matriarch, someone that you love and respect, you know, and even if you weren't, you know, sort of, even if we weren't pushing against societal expectations of your body, you're still, potentially disappointing someone who is important to you. And that's challenging mm. to me on a day-to-day -day basis. Like I feel bad disappointing the plumber when I can't <laughs> like when I can't make the appointment work when they want to, you know, and this huh? is your potential future mother-in-law. Like this would be really intimidating to me. Um, and something I've had to really work on lately is recognizing whose feelings are my responsibility and whose feelings are 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 my problem, basically, and sort of working on separating the idea that like I can disappoint people, my actions can disappoint them, but that I am not disappointing, and that their that their disappointment is their own, and really working on that. So I want you to know, right, like your. Uh, Cooper's mother and Cooper's parents might be disappointed by you and your partner's decision not to have children, but you are not disappointing, right? Your, tr your decision is not disappointing. It's valid. It's important. It's true. It's meaningful to you. They are having an emotional response to your choice. Um, and that's challenging. That's, that's triggering. Right. And that's also like within their right, you know, Cooper's parents will when they find out have a right to their emotional reaction in that they're allowed to mourn not having grandchildren from this particular child they're they're allowed to mourn the future that they thought they were going to have and also you know they don't have a right to guilt you or make you feel bad about that um which potentially they will <laughs> yeah. i don't know them <laughs> absolutely yeah and I think that this is, it's also not yours to hold for yourself. I know yeah. that you're putting a lot of, of the responsibility on it because it feels like it's your choice to not have children. But I also want to point out that like Cooper is also an active participant in this decision to not have children, right? Like yeah. if it were important to him, then he would he would make that really clear. And he's saying, yeah, I, this is not a deal breaker for me, right? Like this is a decision that I'm making to continue to be in relationship with somebody who I know is not going to want to have children. So I think it's important that you two both talk about this with your, ch with each other as well, because I think one of the things that can be helpful is having a perspective of somebody who's like been part of the family as well. Cause I, yeah, I totally I want to say that like, I think what you're experiencing is really real and also right. There's a lot of, it, there's a lot of interpretation about like what things mean and how meaningful they are based on like what people are saying, you know, like I think lots of people make grandparent jokes, 
right? <laughs> and I and I don't know yeah, that they yeah, like yeah, mean yeah, anything yeah, yeah. really intensely about it, right? Like have grandchildren now or whatever, right? Maybe it is. And again, I, I I'm not there, so I don't know. But it is one of those things where it's like, oh, well, you just don't know, or like maybe you know, like you're just making that joke because you've heard all your friends make that joke, right? Like there's a again because we're sitting in this like system of implied children having right that that that, that, those kinds of things just like come up in conversation so I want to say that like yes it's really hard to hear those types of things like those assumptions get made around us especially about us as well and I want to I want to just like create some space for the idea that this is really something that's that you're thinking a lot about and it might not be something that your future parents-in-law are thinking a lot about they're just kind of like doing the thing that they normally do. So I want to just like create space for that. And I think it might be helpful for you to talk to Cooper about what some of your fears and concerns are about talking to his parents yeah. about this so that he can tell you what his experience of them has been or how he thinks that they're going to react yeah. and to enlist him as a partner in how this conversation happens or doesn't happen. Right. And yeah. maybe it is w- just one day the next time your your future mother-in-law makes a joke about grandparents being a grandparent, Cooper says something like, oh, we are actually deciding that we aren't inter- interested in children and we're just going to be part of the family and take care of all of our, our nibblings, right? Like that might be the most effective way, depending on what how folks might be receiving it. So I, I want you to enlist Cooper in this because it's also his decision, right? Like I know that you're more adamant about it, but he's also making the same decision that you are, which is agreeing to not have children in the future, which is great. I'm glad that you're with somebody who like supports that decision and wants to, wants to help you enact it for yourself. Yeah, I totally agree. And in in fact, like this, this might not totally fly for everybody, but I wonder if this isn't a conversation that Cooper should have had with his parents down the line. Like it's his parents. (laughs) Like it's, I mean, and it's his choice not to have children, you know, Um, I'm not trying to like, uh, I'm not trying to cut down any potential intimacy or or vulnerability that you have with your relationship with your potential future in-laws. And also I do recognize just as you did in the letter that there is a dynamic setup that, um, you know, there's a stigma around child-free women. There's a stigma or there, there's an existing dynamic in this family that Cooper's parents might assume this is a choice that you're making solely, you know, and honestly, more power to you because it is your body, et cetera, et cetera. And also you're making this decision as a, as a couple, this might be, be just like totally inappropriate but like maybe cooper should be having this conversation and not you (laughs) or maybe you should be a part of it but that your partner is leading it because he has to own it you know um and he has to own the any familial repercussions that come from it and and i i want to reiterate something sam said too is that like you are doing a lot of preemptive caretaking in this which is i can tell a strong characteristic in your personality to take care of people and to preemptively Mm. anticipate their emotional responses for things. And you don't necessarily have to do this here. I understand why you are because this is such a hot topic and because of the subtle like pressures that you're getting already, but even before getting engaged. Um, And that's, and this is also how I problem solve is that like I, look ahead in the future and anticipate the things that could go wrong. And how can I, how can I be ready for them or anticipate them in one way or another? And also Mm. we don't know what their response is going to be. And so maybe while you're telling yourself, I have to trust what my partner is telling me and that he doesn't want to have children either, or he'll be okay with not having children. You'll have to start telling yourself, um, I don't know what my, in-laws response is going to be until we have a conversation about it. And even then, even when they have their response, their response is theirs. Their emotions are their responsibility and not mine because I've made an informed and thoughtful and nuanced decision about my body and my life. They can have an emotional response to it, but it's not mine. I don't own any of that. For sure. 
For sure. Absolutely. And like, and I know that you want to be in deep relationship with your future in-laws. And I think that that's really great. And, and you don't want this to come in between you and them having a good relationship. And I also want to say that like, if this comes between you and them having a good relationship, that's not your fault, right? Like the fact that you have made this decision for yourself that you know what is best for you isn't the problem. If they're having some sort of reaction or to it in a way that's really negative or that makes them feel like they can't be close to you, then then that's their issue. And I and I say this like lovingly in a way of like as a queer person who has had to like come out and recognize that like some people are going to have really bad reactions to who I am as a person, but that doesn't mean that I'm a bad person or not worthy of love. That means that those people are for whatever reason incapable of seeing me in my authentic authentic self, right? Like of being in relationship with me. And that's disappointing, right? That's really frustrating in a lot of ways, but as a queer person, I've had to learn to not internalize other people's reactions, responses, or ideas of me as anything more than just their own stuff that they're working through, right? Like their own stuff that they're holding on to. You know, I'm thinking about Alok Vedmedin uh, talking about like when we're th- when we're talking about like gender, what people are actually expressing outwardly to us if we are gender nonconforming or if we're not performing gender in the in the quote unquote right way, their vitriol, their hatred, their 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 discomfort, their disgust with us is not actually about us in any way, right? It's about their own understandings of gender and the ways in which those things have been imposed on them. And they're acting out in a way of of hurt because of their own internalized stuff. And I think that this is probably true uh, when it comes to these thinking about like how relationships are supposed to function or how families are supposed to be brought on, right? Part of this is because like your, your mother-in-law probably didn't have the choice about whether or not she wanted to have kids, right? I mean, I'm glad that she did because I think you're. I think Cooper's really great, right? Like, I've, like all of that is really true. But also, like, so much of what I've experienced of people's like dismissal or frustration with like people making choices for themselves is that they often feel like they didn't have that ability, and so they're disappointed, they're frustrated, and that that hurt comes out in lots of different ways. But I want to like hold that for you because. Like Sierra said, you're spending a lot of time like preemptively trying to get your your in-laws to react in the way that you would like to. And I want to say, I can't guarantee, but like we can't give you a script that's going to guarantee that that will happen. And two, if it does happen, it's not actually about you. It's about everything else that's happening around that around this decision, right? Their understandings of what family should look like, their own stuff that they're processing through, the disappointment they might be feeling. And it allows us to actually be more empathetic to people if we like distance ourselves from internalizing what they're saying or feeling, right? Because then it's not like, oh my God, this is my problem. I caused it. I have to fix it. Instead, it's like, oh, this person is going through something right now, right? Like this person's having a big emotion about this thing. And, and I can empathize with that more than I, than I can if I'm, if I'm taking it on myself as something that needs to be fixed. Because you're not a problem that needs fixing. Like, your choice to not have children isn't an issue. So how can you hold that for yourself so that you can then be as empathetic as you can or as you want to be with your future in-laws about how this, might, this idea might be impacting them or their own stuff as they're going through as they're hearing this news? Yeah. I think the last thing I want to touch on is something that you mentioned about like having them, you know, the opportunity to have them sit down and have a big formal conversation about this or to just bring it up the next time you're asked about it casually because it shouldn't be a big deal. Um, Actually, I agree with both of your sentiments and I just want to like give you a quick perspective on that. Um, I think it's actually really beautiful to have like a sit down conversation with them about it. You know, if, if they're capable, if they're emotionally mature enough to have a a conversation about it like that, Um, because Mm -hmm. we make space in our lives for what is important to us. And it sounds like to me, the fact that you'd be willing to have like a sit down conversation with them about it um, tells me that what is important to you is 
vulnerability, communication, um, and connection, right? Like that, that's really Mm -hmm. meaningful to me. And also they, it, it shouldn't be that big of a deal, right? It shouldn't be something that you need to have like an emotional processing space for, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and also maybe you're not the people to emotionally process this with, this choice with, sure. you know, the the, the parents sure. shouldn't emotionally process with you. I think me personally, I would probably wait until after you're engaged, Um Maybe this is me out as an outsider to the relationship suggesting that because like of the old adage, like put a ring on it <laughs> before you have like emotionally vulnerable <laughs> conversations with your potential in-laws. Sure, you know sure, that sure. old love phrase. That. <laughs> yeah, I love that um, phrase. Uh, but that's not me doubting your relationship. It's more just like um, maybe not having to have that conversation until it's truly at the forefront of your in-laws brains but who knows Mm -hmm. um i don't i don't i'm not in your relationship so i don't know the the culture around it or like i don't know if it would be totally fine to have that conversation tomorrow um but either way just reiterating some of the things sam said you know there if you bring up this decision and you have a conversation with it with them about it whether it's like a long, serious sit down one or just an an honest aside, remember that their emotional response is their own. And it's not the fact that you said it in the wrong way. It's not because you're hurting them. It's because they're having an emotional response. And and that's that's their humanness coming out, whether it's like concise or polite or not. But Sam and I support your decision. We know that this is tricky. We know that this is fraught at times. And we know that, you know, you're, you've are you already done a lot of pushing and carving out of your authentic self. Um, mm. And it's unfortunate that you have to push and carve a little bit more. Um, but we know that this is real and right for you. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for writing, and we hope that this helps. We love you. All right, it's Friday, and that means it is the last blind date of 2023. Uh, Our blind dates are something that we love, that we want to set our listeners up with, and this week we are sending you home with... A Christmas movie. Uh, For folks who have listened to the (laughs) show uh, for a long time, you know that I love Christmas movies. That's like what I watch most of the time in December. Uh, And I always try and give you all the one that I liked best out of all of the many that I that I watched through. Uh, And this year, that movie is This Is Christmas, which is on Amazon Prime. It's a very cute movie. It stars uh, the guy who played uh, Dean Thomas in Harry Potter. He was also in How to Get Away with Murder. He was in Foundation. Alfred, uh, Alfred and, Enoch? Yes, Alfred Enoch. Um, and it's about him trying to organize a Christmas party for everyone who he rides the train with every day. Because he's like, we spend you know 45 minutes on this train together every day and I don't know anything about any of you. So why don't we have a Christmas party and it's like it follows him as he's sort he of like cutie. planning it and trying to get people to come and it's very charming there's a love story which is also very cute and not in like a gross cloying way which is important um but it's really <laughs> just about like telling the stories of people who are kind of like near us that we don't actually know that deeply but like everyone's going through something and everyone's got a story uh and it was just like very charming cool. very cute i cried a couple times uh and it was uh i think the exact the exact right thing that i needed in this year uh in terms of the idea of like community coming together and like supporting each other so uh i really yeah. liked it uh again it's called this is christmas and it is on prime all right all right everyone thank you so much for listening if you would like more content from us or if you would like to join us for our monthly office hours you can support us on patreon if you support us on patreon for as little as five dollars a month you'll get an additional bonus weekly episode as well as access to a zoom hangout room with me and sierra and a bunch of really awesome people so check that out at patreon.com slash just pod 
You can slide into our DMs, send us your favorite relationship memes, but most importantly, you can submit your questions about all matters of the heart at justbreakuppod.com, which is also where you can find our merchandise. Please remember to like, follow, subscribe, give us a five-star rating and review. This literally keeps our mics on and helps us reach more brokenhearted souls who need two random strangers giving them relationship advice. Original music, recording, editing, producing all magical things by our good friend, Spencer Worth Davis. Make sure to check out his podcast and his music. And remember, you are enough just as you are. And you are allowed to love yourself just as you are and to move confidently in the direction of your authentic desires. You know yourself. You know your heart. You are strong and capable and you have the permission from the universe to believe in what you know to be true for yourself. And if all else fails, just break up. <laughs> <laughs>